going to get you some nice images. Guess where we're going to start with the progressive headlines today? It's Wednesday, September 2nd. Senator Ed Markey successfully defended his seat in the Senate after defeating Representative Joe Kennedy, a Kennedy in Massachusetts, defeated. Can you believe that? Kennedy, who had the support of Pelosi, attempted to portray himself as the change candidate against Markey. Uh, Markey's only held a Senate seat since 2013, but he was representing Massachusetts in the House since um, before I was born. <laughs> Markey surged with the help of the grassroots energy. He was endorsed by our girl AOC, which basically shows the power she has and other gra grassroots candidates have with the voters. Hello, people want this. Markey is allied with the Green New Deal. The Sunrise Movement, which you all know from either being part of it or watching the show, is the Youth Climate Activists organization. They threw their support behind Markey because he was instrumental and that was instrumental in securing his win. Steve O. Hanlon, the Sunrise Movement communication director, said that, uh, you know, of Markey, whether it's, here's this quote, whether it's radical justice or climate justice or COVID, he's shown he's ready to stand up corporations and the fossil fuel industry and fight for our generation and working families. That's what he told Yahoo News. Pretty cool. I'm saying the ACLU is, uh, is bringing a lawsuit challenging an Indiana law that permits local election authorities to immediately purge the registrations of Indiana voters for fun without written confirmation from the voter notice or any waiting period through the cross check program. Cross check is uh, administered by this guy, Secretary of State Chris Kobach. Look, he's friends with Trump. Remember him? He's the guy who sent the names of the Nebraska residents to ICE during his run for governor. Remember? Not a great person. Anyway, cross-check is known to be inaccurate and unreliable. It uses matching protocol that, according to a study by the team of researchers at Stanford, Harvard, the University of Pennsylvania, and other smarty pants areas, it incorrectly flags people as potential double voters more than 99% of the time. How is that possible? The case was brought by the ACLU, the ACLU of Indiana, Demos, and Davis Wright Termain LLP, and draws on reporting from our very own Greg Palast. He's been on the show a bunch of times. I'm sure he feels good about this. We want to congratulate him for the fact that his journalism is, um, you know, helping to fuel change and lawsuits. Check it. A nationwide day of action to demand school safety is planned uh, for today. Students, parents, teachers, and school staff and other community members in dozens of cities across the United States are mobilizing for safe schools. They're demanding President Trump, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, and Repub her name just, I can't, <laughs> and Republican senators. Uh, Provide schools with, you know, resources they need to protect students, educators, and the families from COVID. Hello? To save jobs? To meet the academic, social, and emotional mental health needs of the kids? My child just went off to school two days ago, and already she seems much, much happier. What's that tell you? They have needs. The Nationwide Day of Action, which is today, is supported by a coalition of social justice organizations and labor groups, including the National Education Association, the American Federation of Teachers. Today marks almost two months since both the AFT and NEA called on that unforgivable turtle Mitch McConnell to support the HEROES Act, which includes over $90 billion for state and local governments. Go online, search the hashtag Demand Safe Schools on the interwebs to find a map of local events and other ways you can plug in. If you can't make it there, you can still plug in. But if you can make it there, hey, it's today. Do it. You might be out of a job anyway, so why not? The family, uh, you know, community of Kenosha and family members for Jacob Blake countered President Donald Trump's ill-advised 
visit, an unwanted, I might add, visit to the city yesterday with a justice for Jacob rally in the neighborhood where Jacob Blake was shot by police officer last week. Blake's uncle, Justin Blake, says they don't need more pain and division from a president set on advancing his campaign at the expense of our city. The president announced his visit to the city over the past weekend, emphasizing that he wanted to meet with law enforcement. Here is um, a vid of the rally. Let's take a look. Officer, we hope he takes care and satisfies his agenda because if you look around him, we're satisfying the Blake's agenda. Is there anything you'd want to get across to the president? That he's had four years and all he's done is regurgitate racial slurs out of his mouth. Um, not be a unifier. He's going to make trouble. We don't need that. Everybody, everything has slowed down there. He's just going to come and wake it all back up. We Absolutely. And that was from the, the um, you know, rally for Jacob Blake that happened yesterday to bring some love talk when Trump is bringing the hate talk. I can't even keep up with the news that's happening so fast. I got a tweet from my Act TV people saying that there's someone running for Congress who is uh, uh, saying that the shooter is a hero. I mean, they're running Nazis now for straight up Nazis. Was that guy who shot the protesters there, was he wearing a brown shirt? because? He seems like the beginning of the support for brown shirts. Anyway, as we reported yesterday, just following up on a story from yesterday, after a day of nationwide action for housing security, Trump and his administration is actually implementing a national four-month moratorium on residential evictions. You're still going to have to pay the freaking rent. So imagine four months plus the one that you couldn't pay last time piled up that you're going to have to pay. I don't see how this is going to end well unless they strike rent. Hello? The moratorium was announced by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, which you would think taking a lot of people during a pandemic and letting them be homeless or have to pack in with other people when we're trying to maintain social distance would not be good for, you know, controlling disease and preventing it, which is supposed to be the CDC mission. Anyway, they said the moratorium is going to run through December 31st. First of January, you're going to have to pay your rent, apparently. Oh, it applies to people earning less than a hundred thousand or well, ninety-nine thousand dollars a year and who are unable to make rent or housing payments. The move drew a mixed reaction from housing experts, praise that it would potentially keep tens of millions of Americans in their homes. Forty million, I think, was the number to be exact from yesterday. But, you know, concern that it only makes back deadline, as I said, potentially setting up people for evictions next year. You know, here's the thing about this, okay? And I'm going to get to the president of the National Multifamily Housing Council in a second one. He said, well, he said he was disappointed that the administration enacted an eviction moratorium without funding for rental and unemployment assistance. All right, it ends in January. Let's take a look at what just might happen. If Biden wins, Trump is going to certainly let people, if he leaves, he's certainly going to just let people go homeless. He's not going to fix it in January. So Biden will have, you know, hundreds of thousands of homeless people on his hands to deal with. If Trump doesn't, if Trump does win or succeed in the coup, let's say, if he wins or succeeds in the coup, He's still going to let this run out. He's still going to let landlords and banks come and ask for their money and kick people out into the streets because he is he doesn't care about anyone but his richest Stan cronies. And not that he doesn't care, but he is actively sowing the seeds of social chaos here in the U.S. Thanks to his good buddy. And his best friend. Putin. Am I wrong? You tell me what's going to happen in January. If Biden wins, Trump's going to let everybody go uh, homeless anyway. Maybe if Biden gets sworn in by the 21st or the 22nd of January, whenever it is, he could do something before the 1st of February. Hopefully that would be his first thing that he does. He would have to, the, Trump is setting up Biden to have to go against the big banks. 
how can Biden win? If he goes, if he's running for office and he says, I'm going to fix this, I'm going to strike your debt, then the banks are going to crush him. Stay tuned for more joyful reporting from uh, Act TV. I'm Juliana Forlano. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And also, give me a little thumbs up in the likey likey down there. Also, I've been reading your comments on YouTube. And I do want to say, actually, let me take a quick second to pull this up. And oh, I see Joe is here. So we got Hi, Joe. I see that you're there. Hold on. Give me one quick second. I want to show for our YouTube audience. Um, something that this is not just a joke. Uh, you know, a lot of people are still doing fine and they're hearing rumors of homelessness. They're hearing rumors of people being put on the streets. This is what's happening in our YouTube comments section. Give me just a quick second to pull this up. You can talk amongst yourselves or comment on whatever. In our YouTube comment section yesterday, I was reading through because I do do that. I read, <laughs> if you're not supposed to read the comments, I guess, on your own YouTube page, especially if you're a progressive, because it will make you like totally insane. But uh, I did. And uh, I do want to show you, you know, what what we have here. Okay. All right. I'm not going to share the video. I just want to share the comments. This is a video um, of what we did yesterday. Well, not this. This is the commercial that they're playing. Look at this commercial that they're playing. Uh, you know, they're playing this GOP shopping commercial in front of our show. It's disgusting. Maybe because they know I that. appreciate Hold up. the voters. Look, two ads of Trump, Trump. before I Every come on. Every weekend. I see it. Absolutely not even disgusting. Now. They're doing it during the week. Let's skip. That. These are the progressive. All right. We're not going to watch me watch me. That's weird. I just want to scroll down and take a look at what is uh, happening in the comment section of our show. Uh, can you see it? You can. Right. Okay. Take a look. You've got people, you know, we've got our nice Howard Zinn quote, which I appreciate. Civil disobedience is not the problem. Our problem is civil obedience. Ain't that the truth? Our problem is that people all over the world have obeyed the dictates of leaders and millions have been killed because of this obedience. The problem is people are obedient and they face poverty and starvation and stupidity and war and cruelty. And our problem is that pe people are obedient while the jails are filled with petty thieves and the grand thieves are running our country. That's the problem. Oh, God bless Howard Zinn. That's not exactly what I wanted to read to you, but I think it's cool that it's there. Here's, um, people are telling me to go watch the Corbett report, which is a mix of interesting and right-wing propaganda. So I won't be doing that. Um, here, here you go. This is the one I want. I don't know if you can see this. David Fort, and I hope it's okay that I'm reading this out loud. I'm a trucker at Ford Dearborn Assembly. They shut down in Mar March 17th. I couldn't get through to unemployment till last week. My power was cut off four weeks ago. I got a repo man showing up every night for my van. And it, if I'll get evicted, even with all my unemployment back pay, there's no way I can pay for everything. This is what people are facing in the U.S. So if you can help, help. Don't just do nothing. We got to call. We got to show up. We got to write. We got to donate. And we got to win.